Okay, so now that we have finished working out the uh, lengths of the roof members in our pitch roof, we're going to look at the angles that we need, the seat, plumb and edge bevel angles that we need when we want to start cutting all the angles on our timbers. So here's a, uh, a plan and a 3D image of the uh, advanced roof that you'll be constructing. We're going to go through some of these angles. Now the first one I'm going to put up here is a common rafter and there is a crown end rafter. These are very, very easy to get. This seat bevel in here is your roof pitch. So whatever roof pitch you are given, that gives you the seat cut for your common rafter and the seat cut for your crown end rafter. To get the plumb cut, it's actually very easy. All triangles, the three uh, angles in those three corners, will always add up to 180 degrees. So in a pitched roof, we are always working with right angle triangles. So this is always a 90 degree triangle. So the other two will add up to 90. So all you have to do when you have that seat cut and you want to get that plumb cut, you simply use this here. 90 degrees minus the seat cut equals the plumb cut for those common and crown in rafters. So let's have a look, have a look at the hip rafters. Now, the hip rafter plumb and seat cuts, they're worked out the same way with one very important difference. The seat cut in the hip rafter is not the roof pitch. And that's because if you have a look at this triangle here, this hip rafter triangle, even though the rise is the same as the common rafter that's next to it, the run is longer and the geometric length is longer. So that means your hip seat cut is always going to be a little bit less than the roof pitch or the common rafter seat cut. So let's look at how we work this out and hopefully you have already guessed what's coming. Our pitch measurement, our pitch formula. So all we need to do is take the rise divided by the run use our inverse tangent or our shift tangent button and that will give us the seat cut of the hip rafter and then we just simply go 90 degrees minus that seat cut will give us the plumb cut for the hip rafter up the top. Right let's have a look at the edge angles now and these are important angles when we're marking out our rafter ends when we're bringing the uh, hips and the crown ends into those tight corners. So we'll just mark those are the edge angles that we want to work out and so we work them out exactly the same way. Now remembering that we've got rise and run in here but we're not actually using technically not a rise or run measurement but the triangle is still in the same shape that we were using when we used the rise and the run of those rafters in there. So this rise measurement, we're using the measurement across the top plate here, divided by the measurement along that side of the triangle. Use our inverse tangent, that gives us the angle in this corner here, which is our edge cut angle. So let's have a look at a plan of uh, the job that you're going to be building. And I'm going to highlight a few of those hip rafters and the edge angles that we're looking at. So we had a couple of those up in the previous picture. I've added these two in here as well. This red line across here is the run of our common rafter, the same as these are all runs of commons or crown ends. What I'm going to do, I'm going to unfold that triangle out here, but I'm not going to unfold the run of it. I'm going to look at the triangle that actually goes up the rake of the roof because it's the triangle up the rake of the roof that gives us this edge angle. So if I unfold that out, you'll notice this green line is longer than that red line. That's because on the plan that represents the run of the rafter, the common rafter, this is the geometric length of that common rafter. So this angle here is the true edge angle. Same with on the outside of those four. So what we've done is we've just drawn the triangle in its full uh, correct proportions. Right? So let's throw some measurements in there, and there's the uh, formula we're going to be using. So I've got some measurements in there. We've got our run and our GL. We've got our distance across the top plate on each one. And I would like you to pause the video and calculate what these edge angles should be. 
using the correct numbers uh, supplied uh, on the plan just there now. All right, go ahead and give that a go. All right, so hopefully you've got four edge angles worked out. And so I'll bring up the correct answers, which I've rounded off to the nearest half a millimetre each time. And hopefully you got the same numbers as those ones. If you didn't, then I suggest you go back to your calculator and see what uh, went wrong with those and work out the correct way to press the buttons on your particular calculator. Right, the last edge angle I want to have a look at are these crown end rafters because they are a little bit different to all the other angles we've worked out. And to show you why, we're going to have to come into this drawing. Here's a close-up of our octagonal end. So this is the edge angle that we just worked out for those hip rafters. There's our hip rafter coming in. And you'll notice that if I move that line from the centre up to the edge where your power saw or your hand saw will actually go through, that's the same angle. And that's why that calculation works. Even though we're working to centre lines, it's still the same as that. But when we look at the edge angle for the crown in rafter, you'll notice it's bigger. But this angle here does not form a triangle. If I go back to the full plan, you'll notice that line across there, it stops here. It doesn't actually make a triangular shape with that red line. It's a bit of a weird shape, so we don't have any kind of triangle that we can use this formula to work it out from. But that's okay because we don't actually don't need to. This crown end, it comes in first and then these ones come in after it and they bisect that angle. So if you have a look at this angle, and we'll flick ahead to where we bring that angle up, it is actually double the edge angle of the hip. So the hip edge angle is half the crown end edge angle. And that's simply because the crown end comes in halfway between those two rafters and then the hips come in halfway between there. So whatever number you worked out for here, simply times it by two to get the degrees for the crown rafter edge angle there. And if we have a look at the splayed end, it's exactly the same thing. There's the hip rafter edge angle. There is the crown end edge angle. And as you can see, it is twice whatever the hip rafter angle was. We drop that out and there is our edge angle for the crown in rafter. Okay, once you've got all of those angles, when you go out to mark your rafters, you can just pick up either one of these types of roofing protractors, or some people call them roofing squares, and they've actually got the degrees marked on them, so you can simply read the degrees off your calculation sheet and mark them on the appropriate spot on the rafter ends.